welcome to this podcast in a series developed by the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association. NJJA is a 501c3 not-for-profit public benefit association. The mission of NJJA is to improve services to youth in the juvenile justice system by serving as a resource for collaboration, leadership development, and education for juvenile justice system professionals and interested stakeholders. Our efforts are greatly enhanced with the generous support of the Sherwood Foundation. Please visit our website at njja.org to see a list of upcoming podcasts, as well as the opportunity to revisit those podcasts previously recorded. We welcome your thoughts as to, to potential podcast topics and interest. Welcome to the Juvenile Justice in Nebraska podcast, produced by the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association. Right. Wow, we'll get up there. Good. Um, hey, it's good to be back. It's been a little while since we've sat down and, and had a podcast. I uh, got to apologize in advance. Um, apparently, the construction crew didn't get the memo that we were taping a, a, a podcast today, so we're doing some some construction outside of uh, the Resca Center here. Um, super excited for today's podcast. Um, we have the new exec- executive director of the Nebraska Juvenile Justice Association here, Mrs. Tammy Sassman. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. You bet. You bet. So you were what, uh, five months, four months into the job, two months into the job? About, probably about a month and a half. A month and a half. That's how <laughs> well I remember things. A month and a half. Uh, may I say a month and a half that has, from my standpoint, has gone phenomenal. Um, you know, one of the things that we're most excited about bringing Tammy on board is is the enthusiasm and and the the want to to spread the word of, of NJJA and, and meet with our stakeholders. Um, so how, how, just talk to us a little bit about how your, your first couple months have been or your first month and a half has been. Yeah. Well, it's been great. It's definitely a learning curve for me. Um, this is kind of a whole new world for me. Um, in the past, I've been doing a lot of um, work in the mental health field. Mm-hmm. And um, with my prior position, we did have some connection with um, some juvenile justice services, of course. Mm-hmm. And so there was that kind of that tie-in. Um, what's really unique about this position that I'm very excited about is I get to be able to provide the leadership and the education and training to folks who serve these juveniles. Um, I think there's a lot of people in this role um, with the same kind of goal, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to provide um, that enthusiasm and education and training um, to those folks who are serving uh, serving those youth. Um, so far within my position, um, we're looking at getting um, some um, bids in regards to um, a strategic plan. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. NJJA needs an updated ser- uh, strategic plan going uh, starting here January 1st, of course. Uh, we're also looking at um, some new board recruitments. Let's sure. put it that way. We have a lot of board members that have been with us for a very long time, which has been very, very fortunate. It really shows the commitment to NJJA um, and, and, and to um, the mission and the value of NJJA. Sure. So uh, not mm-hmm. to interrupt you there, Tammy, yeah. um, you mentioned board recruitment and yes. bringing some new um, talented people on the board of, of uh, the NJJA. Mm-hmm. Um, how would they go about doing that if somebody has uh, a, a name in mind that says, hey, um, you know, I think this person would be great. Um, do they reach out to you? Do they reach out to a board member? All the above? What does that look like? I would say probably all the above. We yeah. have we have an application process, mm-hmm. and then we have a nominations committee. And so they would first um, complete uh, an application, mm-hmm. and then this application would be then submitted to our nominations committee. And through our nominations committee, we then um, review the applicants and then take to the board, who we feel like would be a really good fit for our board, mm-hmm. and, and go from there. Perfect, perfect. Um, Tammy, let's let's take a step back just mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, obviously, uh, Tom McBride, who was our executive director, um, re- retired. I was almost had stepped down. Retired uh, for the fifth time. Um, he had he had NJJ in a great spot. Um, he did a phenomenal job during his his tenure here uh, as the executive director. What type of things? Had he did he have in place that you're going to look to build upon? Um, what type of new things are you are you looking to do? Um, you know, I just just curious. Yeah, um, one thing that I want to continue to build on is Tom had a lot of connections in the community. He knew a lot of people. He knew um, a lot of the committees and what they did, and a lot of what the different agencies are doing. So, um, even within this first month, month and a half, I've been trying to make those contacts. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been trying to build those new relationships um, with with me being in this position now, and to be able to continue with some of those um, those collab- um, collaborations. Sure, sure, yeah. So, yeah, um, one thing that I, I would say that I probably bring new to this is I'm my background in the mental health field. Mm-hmm. 
And um, so one thing that I do is I want to be able to push a little bit more in regards to the mental health um, of these youth and sure. maybe what needs um, are we sometimes maybe overlooking from time to time. Um, other things that I want to um, probably do a little bit differently is I want to offer more trainings mm -hmm. throughout the year. And I want to look at how we can strategically have these trainings so that we're also re reaching out to a lot of those uh, folks that are in the community, the, I'm sorry, the rural communities, mm -hmm. and be able to serve kind of those different district areas. Um, I also want to look at, though, their needs within their communities. So the need in Lincoln and Omaha may be very different than the need in a rural community, such as North Platte or Nebraska City. And so for me, making these different connections with some of these folks within these areas, I'm hoping to be able to kind of get a feel for what are they looking for? What can NJJA provide for, for their community area? Um, we're also, which really exciting that we've been working on in the last month and a half, is um, we're building up our new uh, website. So oh, sure. We're trying to make that a lot more user friendly, have a lot more education on there, um, availability of trainings, be able to um, tailor it so it does serve the, the entire state of Nebraska, um, that everybody can can use it to their availability and to be able to be easily accessible mm -hmm. for some of the trainings that are happening basically statewide. So yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the big things that you you just mentioned, Tammy, was you're working um, not only on on issues and or or ideas in, in Lincoln and, and Omaha, um, but one of the things we often hear um, from the rural communities is everything's focused on Lincoln and Omaha. Um, so that's obviously really exciting. Um, you know, if you're a rural community out there, please know that we want to work with you. Um, you're every bit as important. Um, you know, your work that you do is every bit as important as as, as Lincoln or Omaha or the bigger cities, um, and sometimes more so. Um, so if you're out there, please reach out to Tammy if you have ideas or thoughts. Um, you know, Tammy's a great place to start or a board member, whoever, um, because we do, we really do want to bring attention to, to the rural communities because it's, it's a necessity. Um, uh, we, we feel that, uh, it's an important part of, of who we are as Nebraskans. Um, and we want to be able to be, you know, be there to help. Most definitely. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you you have started working with with your um, employees. Um, we have Trace and and you have uh, Christy. Um, thank you. Uh, great people, first and foremost. Um, what if, what has that been like? Um, they are. First of all, I want to share, they are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, very, very intelligent, very hardworking. They're very, very good at what they do. I'm very, very, very fortunate that I'd be able to come into this role in which I have this strong team already developed. So Tom did a wonderful job of um, creating this, this close team. Um, I, I love the partnership, and I also love the way that the board is very... Um, Committed, let's mm -hmm. just put it that sure. way, to help and make NJJ successful. So, but yes, Tracy and Christy have been phenomenal to work with. Um, we already have agreed that we're going to be working together on on our website and and how we can um, work jointly to make it successful. Sure, sure, sure. That's um, first of all, I, I too, as as board president, feel very lucky um, to have both of those um, in, both of those staff members um, on staff. They're, they are they are truly great. Um, a question that I did have for you, uh, we have somewhat of a large board. Um, you have begun to meet with them. I don't think you've met with all of them, correct? Not all of them individually. yet, but I've been trying to meet with them individually. What, what yes. has that been like? Uh, do you see a shared vision? Do you see um, things that, that, I don't want to say differ on, because I think we're all on the same page, but um, what, what have those meetings been like? Mm -hmm. They've been really beneficial for me because it's really shown me the knowledge that um, these individual folks are bringing mm -hmm. to our board. Um, it's been really interesting to see the unique dynamics of where these people have come and how they've gotten to the positions they're in to this point in time. And I've been also very inspired uh, meeting with these folks one-on-one -on -one for the mere fact that um, they've shared ideas as far as with me in regards to NJJA and and also, too, the changes that they would like to see with the youth with mm -hmm. in, in their communities that we're, that we're serving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the wealth of knowledge um, is endless um, with these board members. And, and as we spoke uh, to previously, we want to continue to develop that um, again. So uh, if you have ideas on, on who you would like to nominate, reach out and let us know. Um, Tim, I have an interesting question for you. Okay. What has been the most surprising aspect of this position? Um, what have you came on and, and, and are really, I don't know, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It just, just has been surprising. 
Um, I would probably say um, how involved the board is. Oh, sure. I've been on a, um, different boards in the past, and the working board, in my opinion, is phenomenal. Um, everybody's willing to step up to the plate to help out. We have different committees, and they're willing to share ideas within these communities committees, um, even within the board meetings themselves, um, not any, no one's afraid to speak up. Let's just Mm -hmm. put it that way and Mm -hmm. give their opinion. And I also see the mutual respect that happens on our board. So if someone's not agreeing with one, um, they kind of ask, you know, where this idea came from, kind of challenge a little bit and everybody kind of seems to come to, to an agreement that will best basically benefit everyone. Sure. Sure. Uh, previously, previously you spoke a little bit about trainings and, and some of the additional things you want to, you want to implement. Um, do you have an idea? Would these be in-person trainings? Would they be virtual? I mean, obviously COVID, um, is, is still, um, here, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, do you think that we would offer, are you looking to offer more online training? And, and if so, um, you know, what type of format would that look, look like? Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably look at doing both at mm-hmm. this po- per- point of time. Mm-hmm. I would probably look at our audience and see how comfortable folks are in regards to having it in person um, in, in, in our society, actually, where we are right now, depending on um, the severity of the Delta variant and COVID mm-hmm. and everything. We would probably also look at, um, we, we need to probably offer it virtual mm-hmm. um, to be able to benefit those folks who are not as comfortable being in person. Mm-hmm. Um, I myself, I'm very much, I feel like in-person trainings are more powerful. Mm-hmm. That's just me. Um, for the mere fact that I think sometimes people get more out of it when you're sitting at home. Sometimes you're doing other things while you're listening to a training. And then for you as the trainer, or for those of you who are the trainers, sometimes it's nice to be able to see that verbal and nonverbal feedback as you're presenting presenting the training. So, But again, I think right now where we are today, I think we need to offer them both virtual um, and in or in person, as long as people feel comfortable. Sure, sure. Um, speaking of trainings, um, I know we've already begun planning for the, the annual uh, conference um, out there in Kearney. Um, I don't have the dates here in front of me, but it's the first weekend uh, in May, um, that Wednesday, Thursday. No, th- is it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, we're excited about that. Uh, have you been involved in that, that conferencing planning? Yes, I have. Um, We already had one of our um, planning committee meetings. And so right now we're focused on keynote speakers. Um, We have one um, has confirmed ready with us. So still looking for two two more keynote speakers at this point in time. Um, We actually have another planning meeting next week. So Mm -hmm. the planning committee has been phenomenal. Again, um, a lot of people who've been on it for quite a few years, they really know what they're doing. Uh, but also, too, it was really interesting in the meeting. We had some new ideas brought up, which was which was really exciting as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so this, the, the keynote speakers is something that we've always prided ourselves on. Um, it's always something that we've tried to do um, the best possible uh, work, uh, getting really good, powerful, well-known speakers um, in. Uh, you mentioned you're looking for two more. Um, is that something that, that the planning committee, and I know you can't speak for the whole planning committee, um, mm-hmm. but would they be open to taking recommendations from listeners? Um, you know, obviously, uh, people go to different conferences, they hear different people talk. Um, you know, is that something that, that people could email you and say, hey, I saw Tracy Weber talk the other, other day and, and she was phenomenal. Um, is that something that, that you'd be open to? I would totally be open to that Um, because the thing is, is I guess I feel like the more ideas, the better. And even if we don't use this trainer as a keynote speaker, maybe we could even use him as a as a breakout session Mm -hmm. um, speaker as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think if if you were to do that for you of those that are for you, millions of people that are listening out there, um, if you were to send uh, Tammy or any of the planning committee um, some ideas, I would definitely send some YouTube or some clips um, if they're available, um, if they you have permission to to share that. Um, you know, just to it cut down cut down our research time. It, it lets us know what they're about, who they are, how they interact, and where they might fit um, on day one, day two, day three. Um, believe it or not, there are definitely um, personality differences that we look for on uh, on placing. Um, these speakers on, on different days. You can uh, send an email at uh, info at njja.org. That's info at njja.org, and we will definitely get those and, and look through them. Um, that'll be uh, handed off to the planning, planning committee, and, and they'll take a look. 
Definitely. Yeah. So uh, what else is going on, Tammy? Tell us a little bit about you. I mean, we talked a lot about NJJA and, and um, you know, how excited you are to, to start this position. Um, you are, you're not a Lincolnite. No, I'm not. I'm actually from a small town. From a small town, which <laughs> leads us to a great uh, spot with, with the rural communities. I, myself, and two from a rural community, so we understand uh, the importance of that. Mm-hmm. So yes. what else What else do you want to share with the listeners? Um, well, my background is working with youth. Um, I've spent over 20 years in a position in which um, I was a supervisor of mental health therapists mm-hmm. that provided uh, mental health therapy within the schools, the school systems. Um, and I took that program, and we, 10 years ago, had about 11, 11 employees with 10 schools, and now we have basically, we've grown into about 32 schools, and last year at one time we were um, a team of 28 mm-hmm. employees. So what's been really exciting about that is we were in Lincoln, and we've expanded. We expanded into some of the rural communities, and what's been really awesome is the rural communities have really bought into it. They see the need. They see the help. Um, I don't feel like we have the stereotypes we, like we used to years ago, um, mm-hmm. the stigma that would come with it if you would go out and receive um, some type of mental health. So, yeah, so that's been very, very exciting for me. Um, before that time, I was doing a wraparound through Region 5, um, working specifically with youth on probation. So mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting how full circle. things circle yep. back around again. Yes. And then before that, of course, um, this is going to um, – partner me with Rico here in a second. I used to work at Cedars, um, Cedars Youth Services at their residential treatment center. Mm-hmm. So was working with some of those youth that we now see, of course, um, being very successful in the community, of course. Um, but also, too, that was kind of my first job out of college where I got to really see what it was like for some of these kids who struggled and um, that were put in a facility, basically, where they were trying to better themselves, but also to needed that help from their peers, um, the folks who work there, and then also the support from their family and friends just to kind of get through those those rough times. Sure. Um, you mentioned your time at mm-hmm. the RTC, uh, Residential, Residential Treatment Center. Um, things obviously evolve um, from, from when you first started uh, working with kids, and, and I think the state of Nebraska, and I've said this before, and, and I'll say it again to I'm blue in the face, um, the the state of Nebraska has invested in, in some true changes when it comes to working with with young people uh specifically in our in our treatment centers and in our congregate care living situations or congregate care living living settings um you know i i'm, I'm excited for you to to get in there and 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 really see all those changes um you know best practices is obviously something that's huge here in the state of nebraska and and our leaders um over at probation and and everywhere else have, have done a phenomenal job of, of adapting and 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 taking that and running with it um, you know, so I, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for you to, 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 to you know, see those differences. Um, not to say that what you were doing was wrong, um, but mm-hmm. education and, and uh, the treatment of, of, of kids and, and best practices and, and all that good stuff just makes a huge difference. Yeah. Well, in my work at, at Family Service, we are very prevention focused. Mm-hmm. And what I've been also um, really excited about is our community, I feel like, is really going in that direction mm-hmm. as far as what can we do to prevent these kids yep. from being locked up, from being put in residential care where they're mm-hmm. in there for months and months at the time. Um, how can we work with families and engage those families and those parents so they can ha- be successful staying at home, um, but get over kind of some, some rough times. Let's we'll sure. put it that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the, and you t- you spoke about, about this a little bit, but one of the biggest things that I'm excited about you, Tammy, is is to my knowledge, um, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but during my time on the board, we have never really had I'm going to call you an expert here, uh, never really really had a mental health expert um, on on the board or involved with NJJA on a, in a close you know close situation. Um, so I think the, the awareness and the 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 focus of mental health um, is going to be huge over the next couple of years. I know it's a passion point of yours, and, and again, you're the expert in in mental health. Um, so I'm super excited about that because I think we have to pay closer attention to um, what's going on, not ex- not only externally with the kids, but internally with the mm-hmm. kids. Definitely, definitely, and and you're you're so right because there's all these screening tools all the time in mm-hmm. regards to we're able to see the external. Um, 
the external behaviors that are happening. And then we kind of come to a conclusion as far as what's going on with the child. But yet mm-hmm. at the same time, we lack the internal screeners to be able to see what's going on mm-hmm. on the inside and maybe why they're behaving the way they are. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that just kind of popped in my mind is, is there are, are I'm, I'm going to say hundreds of, of organizations, um, uh, big, small, or, or indifferent, um, that are working with kids uh, throughout the state of Nebraska right now. Mm-hmm. If you're one of those, if you're a leader of one of those programs and you want Tammy to learn more about your program, Again, email her. Email her at uh, info at njga.org. Um, let her know that, that you have interest in, in teaching her or, or giving her an update on how things are going. Um, from my standpoint, I'd love to have you out and tour our facility out at 66 and Pioneers um, at Cedars. Um, a lot has changed uh, mm-hmm. since last time you, you've been there. Um, you know, so if you're interested in that type of thing, let us know. I mean, I don't think we've done that much in the past, um, but we want to hear from you. Um, otherwise, you know, we, we are kind of planning and, and educating and, and trying to lead from afar. Um, but that's not ultimately what we want to do. We want to know what you're doing to help kids. Definitely. I definitely agree with that one. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? What else? Trace, what else we, we got to talk about here? So, Tammy, you were speaking on, um, you know, some of what we, I should say, we were speaking on, on ideas that people could, could throw at us, either for board members or speakers. Um, we don't want to just leave it at that either. Um, if you're a trainer out there and, and you have um, a training that you feel would be great, um, you know, for a one-day training or a session in a day-long conference, um, we definitely want to hear that, too. I think that's important, um, you know. Being in a position where we are here in, in the state in Lincoln, um, you know, we don't have access to all the, the, the trainings, the, the good trainings that are that are happening throughout the state of Nebraska. Um, if you are one of those and you want us to learn more about it, again, reach out to Tammy. You know, it, it's 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 vital that, that we hear from you um, and, and learn about what some of the options are that are out there. Yeah, and I would probably even expand that just a little bit too. Sometimes folks think that, their training only can be geared towards something in regards to juvenile justice. But realistically, there could be anything that could be tied to that without even realizing it. Um, I know one focus that we talked about in our board meeting a couple weeks ago was, you know, maybe we tied to some trainings about what's kind of happened internationally within the different months of the year. Um, And so, for example, in regards to like October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, if somebody has a fantastic training out there in regards to, you know, how does cancer, uh, finding out about if a parent or a loved one has cancer, how how are kids reacting to Mm -hmm. that and how it's affecting them. Um, that would be like an example of kind of same, something that we might think about that might be outside that box that's not specifically tied to juvenile justice. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, I know I'm asking a lot of our listeners today, um, but if there's podcast topics that you want to hear, uh, please, please reach out to us. Same same email address is just fine. Um, let us know what you want to hear about. Um, you know, we don't we don't want to offer uh, podcast topics that that don't. Um, are not of, of interest to you. Um, my guess is that everything we say probably is of interest to everybody, Tammy. Um, <laughs> but uh, but in a serious note, uh, yeah, let us know what you want to hear about. Um, if you have people that you'd like to get on the podcast, let us know. Um, if you are working with um, outside entities, you know, who are visiting your probation site or your um, your your program um, from other states and they're they're in town for a short amount of time, if you want to get them on a podcast, let us know. Um, we love to hear those those different explanations and different ideas that are happening throughout st- throughout the United States. So, um, on that note, Tammy, I mean, we can wrap up here in a little bit, but um, I do want to say that I I'm throughout my five years, I think I've been on the board five years, um, and love Tom to death, and he knows that. So, um, but I'm super super excited for the future of NJJ. I think with you at the helm, with Tracy, with Christy. Um, I think we are setting up ourselves up for some tremendous success. Um, you know, your energy, your motivation levels, your thought process, your ideas um, is so much different than we've had in the past. Um, and to say that I'm excited would be putting it lightly. Um, so I can't thank you enough. Um, the, the hiring process was a long process. Um, we had a lot of, of really good applicants. Um, and and we are thankful that we landed on, on Tammy because... Um, you know, she's super special uh, and she's going to be great at what she does and and uh, can't wait to, to see what happens in the next couple of years. I appreciate it, Rico. Thank you very much. And um, I'm looking forward to one- working with this wonderful team, most definitely. Yeah.
Okay, uh, we're going to wrap up. As always, Sherwood Foundation, thank you so much uh, making these podcasts happen, uh, making, making them possible, and, and, and for all the other support you give us. Um, it, you're, you're a vital part of what NJJA does, and we can't thank you enough. So, um, okay, we're going to wrap up. Uh, thank you so much, and take care of yourselves. Be healthy. Be healthy.